Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics. And this video is part three, the final part of a three part series. And in this video, we're going to find the final velocity when this object, which is projected straight up, comes straight back down, the final velocity down here at the bottom. In part one, which you can link to right here, we found this change in height and the final height of the ball. In part two, we found the total time that the ball was in the Air, you can link to that part here also. And now in part three, we're gonna find the final velocity when we take this object, which is projected from an initial height of 17 meters above the ground. We're going to project it with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second straight up. It's going to stop and it's going to fall right back down to earth. And we wanna know what is the final velocity right here right before it hits the ground surface right there. Okay, so what we're gonna do next is we're going to get out all five of the variables that are in our kinematic equations. That is the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in height, the acceleration, and the time. And we're gonna fill in what we know and what we don't know and what we're looking for. Obviously, the first thing we might fill in is the initial velocity. We know the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Now, do we know the final velocity? No, we're looking for the final velocity, but we do know the change in height. And you have to remember in this problem to keep your sign straight because the change in height is actually minus 17 meters. Where the object starts, we usually define that as the zero position. So zero on the X and the Y axis, and this is falling down. So therefore the change in position is actually 17 meters in the negative direction. So therefore we have negative 17 meters. Also free fall kinematics, we know the acceleration is negative 9.81 meters per second. That is the acceleration due to gravity on earth, 9.81, negative 9.81 meters per second squared. We are trying to find the final velocity. We're not given the time and we don't need the time in this problem. Now, just like all of our other kinematic equations, we have been given three variables. We're asked to find a fourth. So now we're going to get out our kinematic equations. We have all our values up here. We are trying to solve for the final velocity. So that means we need an equation that has the final velocity, but also the equation we have to know the other three variables. So this first equation has the final velocity. We know the change in height, we know the initial velocity, but we don't know the time. Because we don't know the time, we cannot use this equation. We also have the final velocity here, but we have the time here and we have the time here, so we cannot use either of those equations. That means we're gonna to have to use this one. Now let's just check. Are we looking for, where are we looking for? We're looking for the final velocity. Here's the final velocity. Do we know the other three variables. Yes, we know the initial velocity. Yes, we know the acceleration. And yes, we know the change in position. So therefore, this is the equation that we're going to use. Final velocity squared is equal to the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times the change in position. Now, of course, we're not trying to find the final velocity squared. We're trying to find the final velocity. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, and that will give us that the final velocity is equal to the square root of the initial velocity squared plus two times the acceleration times change in position. Now we're going to fill in the values. And we have to make sure we keep our signs straight here because this is positive. So it's 15 squared plus two, now this is negative, so we have to make sure we keep our negative sign here for our acceleration, negative 9.81. The change in position is negative 17. So we gotta make sure we carry our negative sign over there also. Okay, so we just do the math, and we get that. That is equal to the final velocity, equal to the square root of 225, which is 15 squared, plus we do the math here, we get 333. That means the final velocity is equal to the square root of 558. And if we take the square root of 558, we get that the final velocity of the object when it is projected with an initial velocity of 15 meters per second straight up, comes straight back down, the final velocity is going to be 23.6 meters per second. 
Okay, there you go. That's all there is to it. We drew a nice little picture. We got out our kinematic equations. No, we got out our kinematic variables. We filled in the values that we knew and what we were looking for. We got out the kinematic equations, chose the correct equation, solved for what we're looking for, the final velocity, plug the values in, get the answer with the correct units. There's not much to that. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, you can link right here to parts one and part two. You can please subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a nice thumbs up for this video and leave me a nice positive comment. I appreciate that very much. And thank you for watching. We will see you in the next video.